Hello, it's Owen from Happy, and today I've got a really exciting demonstration for you. The Mojave Audio MA37 Tube Microphone. Mojave Audio is a mic company out of Burbank, California, started by David Royer in the mid 80s. Why does that name sound familiar? Well, it's the very same David Royer that set up Royer Labs, the company that you can credit with bringing ribbon mics back into style in the studio in a reliable, modernized guise in the late 90s. The Mojave MA37 is a recreation of the vintage large diaphragm Sony C37A, the first condenser microphone manufactured in Japan, which appeared around 1955 and has since grown rarer and incredibly expensive, selling at the moment anywhere between 10 to 25k Australian. Because it's a fascinating bunch of information, let's have a brief look at the lineage of this mic's design. The Sony C37A was built as a competitor to the legendary and pricey German Neumann U47 for the Japanese market. It was found that the C37A excelled at close micing sources, something which didn't work so great for the U47. And with trends changing in recording and close micing becoming commonplace, the C37A began eating into Neumann's sales. Coupled with the supplies of the U47's V14 tube becoming scarce, Norman was inspired by this mic to create the U67 to compete with Sony. The other area Sony took inspiration from is the American RCA 77D mic. The RCA has an acoustically changeable mic pattern adjusted with a screwdriver on the rear of the mic, and the Sony does the same. And all these mics, it's terrifying to change the polar pattern because I'm always afraid I'll strip the screw on it. On the power supplies, there is a bass roll-off section that is very much like that on the bottom of the RCA mic with the same labelling too. Here it's a selector switch that is flat at M for music, rolls off at 100Hz for V1, voice 1, and at 200Hz for V2, voice 2. The Mojave also features their own specially built capsule and an EF86 tube instead of a 6AU6 tube for easy sourcing and replacement, and a robust solid state power supply with a Lundell transformer. You see, part of the reason the transformer is in the power supply is that Sony wanted to be able to make a smaller size mic for the 1955 new world of television broadcast. It was thought that the RCA ribbon mics and the Neumann U47s may dwarf the presenter or vocalist on the screen. Once you plug this thing in, you'll notice that the Mojave has a somewhat subdued high end. It's not that it's dark, it just doesn't hype the top ends like a lot of modern mics like to do. For this reason, it's great for vocalists, especially sibilant ones, drum overheads, and guitars. Always sounds silky. Another cool thing is that it's got an enormous amount of headroom. You could fire a pistol next to this thing and it still won't clip. And it's got a standard sized mic stand mount so no more messing around with the unusual Sony adapters to string this thing up. Today, we're gonna to do a quick shootout between it and an original Sony on vocalist and performer Andy Gollidge with an a cappella version of his track, Baby Mama. Let's see how similar they sound, what the differences are, and what the Mojave has to offer. Keep in mind that the Sony is about 60 years old, and while it has been well maintained, it most likely does not sound exactly how it did fresh off the production line, whereas our Mojave here is sparkling brand new. I'm going to keep the bass roll off on the M music setting, so there'll be no audio rolled off. Let's see how this thing performs. One more darling down this cheap hotel I got. Twenty-two dollars I can feed myself. Know the feeling when you're going down. I got a hungry heart, man. Can't control my health. Oh, baby, mama, come on now. Oh, baby, mama, help me out. And I don't know the reasons why. I hurt myself no, 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 no. And there we have it, the Mojave MA37 tube microphone. 
As a one mic source on drums and vocals, it sounds spectacular. Always silky, never overly bright, and it seems to take EQ really well without sounding too thin or boxy. And the differences between it and the Sony, as you've seen, are completely negligible. They're very, very close. It's an incredibly well-built piece, with its solid state power supply and easily attainable tube, I can see this thing lasting on and on for, I don't know, maybe another century. Furthermore, the cradle and mic on the Mojave actually feel more robust than the original Sony ones. The Mojave MA37 retails at just under 6K Australian. It's not cheap because it's a quality piece. It's robust, sounds fantastic, and will probably last you for a lifetime. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll catch you next time for more audio stuff.